So these are, I'm going to repeat myself just for the online video. Um, these are the forms, or these are the flowcharts for the digital media program for 2015. They are not finished. I need to review them with Dr. Wade. They're almost finished. There's a few little graphical issues going on here. You definitely would, uh, are going to need your layers panel. And I'm going to go ahead and make my layers. I'm going to go to panel options and increase the size to quite a bit. Let's say 250. Sounds pretty good. There's a lot of um, interesting, I think it's a really interesting way of looking at a project when handed something like this to create. I mean, originally I had thought of it in terms of putting it on the website. And um, I didn't realize that it was going to be a booklet at some point. Like nobody really, originally, actually nobody told me to do this. I just kind of decided to do it one day because the original was like this messy thing created in some other program. Um, so I decided to create something that was a little bit easier to look at. But you'll notice that um, you'll notice that I created an 8.5 by 11 and an 11 by 17. Now, why did I do that? Why did I create two versions? Can't I just click and drag up and do that? Why did I create two different versions? Huh? Right, but why did I need two different sizes? That's true. I didn't know where it was going. Um, but why didn't I just click and drag? I could like, I could just like, click and drag this guy and then copy him over and then make it bigger, right? Because of fonts. The problem with clicking and dragging this guy over to a new... And I have got a bunch of locked layers, so you won't be able to. I won't be able to do that. Is that when I make it bigger, there's a bunch of white space. The aspect ratio, right? The ratio from width to height is different from eight and a half by eleven to eleven by seventeen. So you guys are looking at me rather quizzically. So I'm going to show you, even though I hate the idea of torture of doing this to my document, but because I tried it initially, I was like, why isn't this working? Of course, it did not work. So let me create a new artboard here of 11 by 17. That's tabloid. Can't you create the vertical? Um, I think can create a vertical. Oh, move over to the panel. Did I create a new artboard? Oh, I see what I created. It didn't create a new artboard. Well, anyway, I'll just undo this a few times. So if I click and drag this guy down here, it wasn't very hard to create, you know, the 11 by 17, but I needed to space things differently. So if I click and drag this out and I'll hold down the shift key, look what happens. Look at all this space. I mean, if you'd created, actually, I think originally I'd created an 11. Oh, I remember what I did. Originally, I created it at 11 by 17 because both I was imagining it being printed on 11 by 17, and then when you put things on the web, the web tends to like wider things as opposed to taller things. Does that make sense? It tends to fit a little easier if the images are a lot wider than they are tall. But I had the same issue where here where I needed to space things out completely differently. So stuff to think about. All right, let's talk about symbols, which is the product of the day. So make sure that you have your layers panel open and that you can kind of see everything. I probably made things, my um, thumbnail's a little bit too big. And just to make sure that everybody's clear on this, this is a work in progress. It's not finished, so don't take this information literally yet. So I think I made some changes to motion media and things like that. Um, but I need to review it with Dr. Waite before I finalize. And there's little glitches kind of going on in here. You'll notice if, if you eyeball the motion media track, um, you'll notice that the, um, the line kind of goes over on here. Uh, we're going to kind of fix some of that. <clears throat> Let's see. I think I have all of these locked. Let me just go ahead and lock these. Go ahead and find the core classes layer. 
and unlock it by clicking the little lock icon. Let me pick. Why won't you let me lock? Lock that. Okay. It's really convenient to lock these layers so I'm not like accidentally clicking like these gray bars and, and dragging them around. You'll notice it doesn't let you select a lot of those options. So, And go ahead, I think by default, uh, go ahead and hide the E media layer, which you can do by clicking this little eyeball icon right here. Now, uh, one of the panels that we're going to need is your symbols panel. And the symbols panel, if you're working on the, with the essentials layout, is right here. And the symbols panel kind of becomes fairly obvious once we take a good look at it. It's kind of like clip art. One of the things that Illustrator doesn't do very well is it, it doesn't really have like a master's page, right? Um, I can't like make changes globally very easy. If I was unhappy so, for example, one of the things that doesn't print very well is the uh, e-media. This purple does not print very well. It's really bad at printing. It looks bad. If you even go out there, it just, it's just a weird color to print. It just doesn't come out and print very well. But if I wanted to change these and I hadn't created them as symbols, then I'd have to go in here and, you know, double-click this group, select the object, you know, um, oh, I need to double click that one. Oh, actually, it's a symbol. Let me choose another one because that one is a symbol. This blue right here. If I wanted to change this one, I have to go in here and double click. And I'd have to do this for every single instance of these blue circles, right? That's kind of a pain in the neck. So what I should have done when I created this document is did what I did when I what I finally learned with the e-media track is to create a symbol. So what I did was I kind of created a simple circle. It has a stroke. And I can even double click it, actually. Why don't you guys go ahead and do that? Go ahead and select any class, maybe your favorite class, I don't know what it is. And select ungroup. Go ahead and ungroup those guys. And this little circle right here is, if I double click it, I'll get a warning dialog box. Again, don't ignore these. You're about to edit the symbol definition. Any edits to the symbol will be applied to all instances. And I click OK. Uh, I ungrouped that section, and then I simply double click the object. And then it brings up this dialog box right here. Uh, you could do any, uh, well, do go ahead and do eMedia. So go ahead and re-eyeball eMedia, and then uh, ungroup any of the classes, really. I'm going to go ahead and do publication. Now, when you double-click a, um, click and drag. When you double-click a, <coughs> an instance of one of your symbols, you end up seeing it with the artwork kind of grayed behind here. And you might be tempted, and I'll go ahead and just click and drag a selection that I, so that I select the entire object. I think it's, it's, it's two circles on top of one another. Uh, you might be tempted to, to kind of reposition things if this wasn't quite lined up. But notice, watch what happens if I reposition this over here. And then I kind of commit that change by clicking this. I can just click Escape, actually. Look what happened. All instances of that symbol have moved over to the right. I changed its registration point. Now let me undo that a few times. So when you are editing a specific symbol, you need to be careful because it's going to edit all instances of that. A slightly better way to work, incidentally, is to double click the actual symbol itself inside of the symbols library. And notice that the artwork behind it kind of goes away. And any changes I make here, including if I move it around, so there's this center, you guys see that X right there? That's sort of the center anchor point. Any change to its position is going to change the position of all the symbols inside of there. Let me go ahead and close the slide paint bucket thing. 
<clears throat> now, if I had been really smart, I would have done um, symbols for all of the different sections. You'll notice that I didn't quite do it with packaging. Like these are actually just the circle. It's not an actual symbol, it's just a group. And likewise with, um, if I go down here and I'll go ahead and, um, I'm gonna go ahead and hide all the, of the different emphases and work. You might need to unlock the core classes. So unlock core classes and go ahead and select DIGM 2350 at the front. I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup. Let's see, you know what I need to do actually? I'm gonna select this little meatball right here and if I select the meatball, it's gonna select everything in that layer, right? So everything in that layer is selected and then I'm gonna right click it and then I'm gonna go to ungroup. That's gonna ungroup everything all at once because we don't want groups at this time. Although it does make sense for, for me to have groups in there because when a new class is created, things like that, it makes it a little easier. So click the little meatball for core classes and then right click and select ungroup. All right, once you've done that, you'll notice that this little red guy is not, ah, I can't select him. It is not a symbol. The way that I create a symbol and so I'll shift click the entire object is I simply have the object selected and I can click this little new symbol icon. I can also simply drag it into the symbols palette if I want to add it. You can see if I click and drag, I can actually kind of set it before these options. And then once I do that, it has um, some symbol options. For the most part, you don't need to worry about any of these. Uh, guides for nine slice scaling is actually kind of neat but it's a little bit beyond the scope of this class. This kind of stuff you don't need to worry about. It's for if you're importing it into um, Flash, yeah. Align the pixel grid will matter if you're doing some web stuff, but only the name might matter. So I might go ahead and rename this core class or core uh, circle, whatever. And I'll click OK. Of course, I've got an issue here where I have a symbol selected but I don't, I have a whole bunch of instances where it's not. And I tried this today and I think I'm stuck. There's no way to replace objects with a symbol as far as I can tell. Um, there might be a way, but I could not find one. Like almost like a find and replace. So what I'm gonna have to do and the reason why I'm doing this, incidentally, is to make this document easier to edit in the future, right? It's something that I should have done to start off with, but I didn't. And if I shift click here and incidentally, one thing that I can do to make things a little bit, oops, to make things a little bit easier on myself, go ahead and click um, this, this yellow circle in the middle. It should be ungrouped. And you can go up here to the top and go to select, same. And then I can select all of the same objects by these criteria. Of course, I'm pretty sure that they all have the same fill color. So select same fill color. And you'll notice it has selected all of those yellow circles. Then I can simply push the delete key. I can do the same for those red circles as well. Select, same, fill color, and then push the delete key. Now, I may not want to push the delete key here as these are kind of, I could kind of use these as reference points for replacing a lot of them. Because eventually I'm gonna do what? I'm gonna kind of replace all of these with that and I want to um, align things just right. So one of the things I'm going to have to do in the future is add an area of emphasis that's coming up. I think there's going to be one in simulation and gaming eventually in 2016. But let's say I, I think green is the perfect color for 2016. Well, I can't easily, let's actually, let me say, let me uh, assume that I think purple is the perfect color it's difficult, 
if I had not created a symbol, I would have a hard time changing this purple to a different color. So I'll go ahead and change, maybe I'll make it, uh, we'll try like a slightly different or darker purple maybe. And then I'll click OK. And then I'll hit Escape to kind of go outside of that. And notice that, oh, you know what? I missed a step. I should have added that purple as a swatch. We'll do that in just a second. Notice that it has changed every single instance. Oh, dang it. It's a mouse wheel. It has changed every single instances on both of the documents here. I think all of these are symbols. They should, they better be. Of course, the purple line is still a different color, but what can I do? I can select one of those lines and then go to, um, let's see, select, same, stroke, or fill in stroke, it doesn't really matter. And look what it does, it selects all of those purple lines and then I could go in here and I should have made it a swatch. Actually, let me do that right quick. So if I double click this purple, let's see. Double click this guy. Oh, I think I did make it. I, I did make it a swatch, but I didn't make the new purple a swatch, right? Of course, what am I not going to do? I'm not going to move this around. So if I double click here, I think I can select color swatch. Let's see. I think I can just click the fill and drag it into my swatches. Come back. Or maybe just select new. That'll work. I'll just select new on the swatches panel. Let's try this new print. And then when I hit escape, I can go back, select one of the lines, go to object, same, fill in stroke. It selects all of those lines, and then I need to, oh, with my um, stroke selected, of course, then I can select that new purple that I created, and boom, now those purples match. I'm going to go ahead and kind of go back over to the 8.5 by 11 document. Um, really interesting stories kind of behind this. Very typical kind of client interaction where I, I created one design and nobody liked it at first. And I think I... Uh, and I showed it to all the professors and there's never like one person approving any kind of thing that you create by the way there's always like a group of people doing it so everyone's going to offer your inputs I think originally I had like a dotted line for this path instead of extending it over here so they made me move it up like that um, originally I didn't have the um, Wharton junior college class equivalents on there, so they made me change that. There was a little bit of concern that students might take, because the flowchart shows you um, the prerequisites. You can always just like find a class and then look at the lines going backwards and figure out what the prerequisites for a class are. But people were worried about going backwards for prerequisites for some reason, which might be a concern if, I don't know, we had a lot of um, Asian students because their languages they tend to read you know right to left instead of left to right so that could be an issue you know so I had to do like this took me like a couple of weeks to just create this simple thing and it's not like there was anything very complicated about it in Illustrator but just to kind of show you guys give you guys an, a window into working with a client or clients um, it took me a long time to get this right and it's still taking me a long time just to update it um, I really need to double check and make sure, I'm pretty sure motion media is wrong. I'm pretty sure that this, I think I, you notice I made some changes to motion media. I'm pretty sure motion media is wrong as well as a few others. But anyway, <coughs> there is one more thing I would like to show you and I'm going to go ahead and hide. And this is important for your lab assignments is there's a tool inside of here. Now let's assume that um, Dr. Waite has gone insane, which is not far from the truth, <laughs> and has decided to add a myriad of classes with a myriad amount of um, 
prerequisites. Mike, I need you to add a bunch of the stuff to the core. One of the things I can do, one of the tools that associates itself with the symbols panel is the symbol sprayer tool. And if you click and hold it, please notice that there are a lot of options down here. I'm just going to select the symbol sprayer tool itself. And whatever symbol I have selected, uh, wherever my symbols palette was, oh, I closed it, so window symbols. Whichever one I have selected, of course, I think I want core. I can click and drag and see how it's spraying them on. So now the prerequisites are even more confusing. <laughs> Figure that out, students. And underneath the sprayer tool, you saw all of those different options in there. You can kind of go in and change how some of these things. So you can see how this works really well, like in your lab assignment four, with things like leaves and grass and cereal. Oops. <laughs> We kind of actually meant to um, include this. One of the things that we kind of made a mistake on is we, we intended this lecture to be before Lab Project 1 was due, but it just didn't work out, so sorry. But you could have created a symbol out of one of your, uh, you know, your O's or whatever you guys created. I don't know. saw some zombie stuff, brains, um, and then sprayed it on there. And if you double-click the tool itself, so I'm going to uh, click this little fly up menu and I'm gonna, and you can do this incidentally with any tool. If you double click the tool, let me see. Ah, there it is. You can bring up the options for that tool. So you can actually set the intensity, how many does it spray on at the same time? So if your grass isn't quite thick enough or your leaves aren't thick enough, now obviously the application that I'm applying here is not great where I'm sort of, you know, adding core classes that doesn't make a lot of sense. But you can kind of go in here and change different variables. And a lot of these variables should work on the fly. So if I change the scrunch, oh, user defined. User defined means it will change it based on how you move the mouse more. Does that make sense? As opposed to that. So you can go in here and change all of these options and how all of these different tools work. And there's a lot of them. So you kind of need to go in here and play. You can kind of, well, rotating, that's not going to do anything to a circle, right? But it might do some stuff to your leaves. Go in here and see what it does. You can kind of erase them. Um, style editor tool. I don't know what this one does. Please select the graphic styles panel. Oh, you know what? This, the one on the end here, you can create graphic styles, uh, which are really just like um, the appearance panel presets are the graphic styles. So similar to swatches, you can create, you know, if you had an object with multiple strokes, you could save that as a graphic style. And then with this tool, you could click and drag and it would apply. Oops, I didn't select one. Uh, let's grab this nice little pattern here. And we can see here I'm sort of painting on those styles or the style I had selected. That looks a little nicer. I might go with that. So when you guys do lab this part of lab assignment four, <laughs> looks like our course has like chicken pox or something. When you do this part of lab assignment 4C, you need to create a leaf and just kind of create a simple leaf pattern. Remember, we drew this as part of the Apple logo. And then you create a symbol out of it. And then you kind of spray it on. Maybe uh, double click that tool and change some of the variables. And then you might also need to kind of experiment with some of these other um, symbol sprayer tools to kind of, you can kind of shift them in a direction and get them to look just right.